What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and today we're going to talk about Formula One. Yeah! So we got the season opening Australian Grand Prix going on this weekend and yeah, time to talk about some of the changes and all the little things that changed. Uh, for one, Mercedes will apparently not be all dominant, all conquering if testing times are anything to go by. Hallelujah, the Red Menace is coming to save the day from the Silver Champ. Yeah, shots fired. But uh... It should hopefully be a closer closer grid this year, uh, if the testing times are to be believed. Red Bull with Renault somewhere kind of a little bit behind there, but I would not be surprised if they do end up uh, bagging a few wins at some point this year. So hallelujah, it will not just be a Mercedes stomping if you are a fan of anything that is not just Mercedes or Lewis Hamilton, because you Lewis Hamilton fanboys are insufferable. Or alternatively, you Nico Rosberg fans, but nobody was a fan of Nico Rosberg except for the people who hated Hamilton. Oh yeah, that Rosberg guy, he retired even though he won the championship because he's all like, Haha, Hamilton, haha, you can't beat me. I won. I'm going out on top. Peace. And in place of the retired world champion, Nico Rosberg, you have Valtteri Bottas coming over from Williams. And I'm just going to say this. This is going to be one of the best storylines of the season. And this is the one thing I'm really looking forward to in Formula 1 because you know what? I'm not a Lewis Hamilton fan. I'm not a Lewis Hamilton hater. Don't get me wrong here, but I think that having a teammate who is just as good as he is, and I do think Botas is just as good as Hamilton is, and I do think he will show it off this year, given a capable, competent car, certainly much better than Williams on any track that actually has downforce involved, but uh, you know, I don't think Hamilton is going to be able to break him the same way he was able to get inside uh, Nico's head a little bit and I think uh, Hamilton is that driver who needs to know that he can beat the other guy and play around inside his head even though he's really not inside of his head he just needs to think that he has an edge over his competition even when he may or may not have so it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens because I don't expect this to go the same way where it is quite clear Hamilton was significantly faster than Rosberg but it just didn't play out in his favor more often than not last year. So, keep your eyes peeled on that one. And of course, we got regulation changes. We got more downforce. We're throwing all the downforce at the cars for 2017. Hallelujah. We got wider cars. We got different wing positions. We got more downforce. We got more speed. These things are going to break lap records at basically every friggin' track that they go to. And hallelujah for that because Formula 1 should always be about going and stupidly fast. In stupidly, insane and stupidly, just that fast. Sorry, I'm feeling like a hype man, pitch man today. But you know what? You can't change in Formula One. The fact the racing is absolutely gonna suck. But actually, I'm gonna come at you with a different approach to the same concept. Okay, so we got so much downforce on the car that nobody's gonna be able to run within half a second at all. Not even gonna be possible. It was already difficult enough with the reduced downforce regulations of the last couple of years, but now you add in all the downforce in the world, heck, cars aren't even going to get close to one another. This means that DRS might finally actually be interesting and not just the insta-pass button as they rock it on down the straightaway because they'll be so far back where if they can just barely get into DRS range, I have a feeling that they might just be barely side-by-side -side going into the brake zone, which, well, hey, then we might actually get some battles in wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Maybe this whole stupid levels of downforce thing isn't actually a bad idea because, well, frankly, the cars are going to race like crap anyways because that's Formula 1, that's modern aerodynamics and all that, and you can't change that at all, but at least they can be spectacular. Or as spectacular as a 1.6 liter hybrid V6 turbocharged car can be. Yeah! Oh yeah, by the way, they sold Formula 1 off to that Liberty Media Group. Yeah, some American conglomerate bought Formula 1 because that makes total sense. Said nobody ever. But it happened, and you know what that means? That means that we're going to hear about Crazy Bernie, not that Bernie, the, the, the European Crazy Bernie, saying some stupid thing at some point during the year where everybody's like, Wow, <laughs> remember that guy? That guy was an idiot. But at least he doesn't have Formula 1 under lock and key. Hallelujah for that. 
but it'll be interesting to see how uh, Liberty Media Group, or whatever the heck their technical full name is, how they actually make changes throughout the season and going on into the future of Formula One, because, well, the last couple years have not exactly been spectacular, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. But you know what? Even though you can change the regulations, make the cars wider, add more downforce, get rid of Bernie Ecclestone finally, hopefully have someone that's not driving a Mercedes win more than one or two races this year. You can do all that. You can go crazy. But there's one thing you cannot change about modern Formula One, and that is just how crappy Honda's engine is, which is definitely going to play out throughout the course of the season. It's going to be a heck of a fun watch to uh, watch. Sometimes the wheels just fall off. I'm sorry. But, uh... Fernando's still sitting in that chair, still dreaming of better times, and does not look like those better times are going to come around anytime soon. And it's quite hilarious, actually. I mean, it really is quite hilarious how bad that Honda is, to the point where they could probably actually take the HPD IndyCar engine, pop it in the back of that. Yes, it's cheating because it's 2.2 liters, and that's just extra displacement. But you know what? Maybe they should just go ahead and add a Formula One uh, new regulation that McLaren should not be allowed to be this incredibly terrible thanks to their engine supplier, so desperate measures require desperate measures, and, well, yeah, maybe that should be a thing. I think they could actually go faster, because that engine is garbage! Or alternatively, they should just LS swap it, because LS swap everything. Hey, guy who's gonna be all like, but fuel flow regulations? The joke's on you. No one cares. And you know what else you can change? Pirelli's tires. Okay, you can change them. In fact, that they actually have changed them because obviously the cars are going to be going significantly faster, which means that they needed to work on the tires. However, I still expect to see at some point this year there will be a couple of races where tires will be a huge, huge storyline of the weekend in Formula 1 because there will be either tire issues in terms of wear, tires not lasting at all, or alternatively, and more spectacularly, tire failure. I mean, it only stands to reason that as the cars get faster, the tires are under heavier demands, and yes, they've tried to cope with that. However, I don't think anyone is exactly sure what to expect, and, well, we'll see how that plays out, because there's a lot of different circuits on the Formula 1 calendar, obviously, and there's a lot of different demands placed on those tires, so good luck, Pirelli. <laughs> good luck. But hey, with great risk comes great reward. But you know what? There is one thing that has changed, and that is the dull drab monotony of the liveries in Formula 1, because this year we got shenanigans going on. It's like Bernie Ecclestone got shoved out the door, and everybody's like, Yay! Fun! We can have fun again! Yay! Because you got Force India in pink, you got McLaren Honda in this weird orange and black thing that nobody asked for. It's just... Why couldn't you just do all orange? Why'd you put why'd you put the black accents in there? Just no, oh, you ruined it. You killed it. You killed it. You ruined it. Just like your engine. And then you got you know Toro Rosso who's driving like a Red Bull can on friggin' wheels, and it actually kind of like looks different from the Red Bull cars, and like verifiably easily so from like wow, that's totally different. Red Bull changed their livery a bit, although it's still like the same thing. They should just go ahead and run that camouflage livery from a well, they're testing that they always do, because that actually looks friggin' sweet. Draws the eye, but, uh, yeah, you got shenanigans going on. Although, of course, Ferrari has to go and be boring and be all like, Yeah, we got red. Got a red car again, yep. Driving a red car for, like, the 16th season in a row, because that's what we do, yep. Seriously, one of these days. One of these days, yellow Ferrari, Formula One race car, needs to happen because I made that skin for Grand Prix 4, and you know what? It looks freaking sweet. Just, just, just say So anyways, that's that. Totally off the wall, totally random. <laughs> I don't know what, what's gotten into me. Apparently I had consumed too much sugar. But, uh, yeah, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed. All right, bye.